And I believe we are live, ladies and gentlemen. It is so good to have everybody here this afternoon. And I Another amazing uh, time to be gentlemen. here with everybody. It is so good and I hope you, everybody's here. good. Sorry, I'm just going to mute there. There we go. Hey, a warm welcome from us from Cloud Edu. Another uh, weekly uh, webinar that we host. And I'm uh, quite very excited today. We have our amazing Carrie Ann Gibson all the way from uh, Text Help. And uh, she will be introducing an amazing feature uh, from Text Help called Read and Write, an amazing uh, software extension that is actually uh, where well, one can install that in your Chrome uh, for your students to, support, to, to give them much more uh, um, educational technological um, support. But uh, I'm not going to actually spoil it for you guys. Uh, Kerry Ann, I'm, I'm going to give over to you very soon. Um, but from our side, uh, we would love to connect with all with everybody uh, that is watching today. Uh, please do reach out to us. Uh, Cloud EDU uh, is a Google for Education premier partner um, company here in South Africa. Uh, we, del we deliver a lot of services to many schools here in South Africa. And so we would love to meet with you uh, to help you identify your educational technological uh, vision at your school. Um, and we have worked with a lot of schools, uh, roughly um, over 300 uh, of um, schools here in South Africa, and the number is definitely growing. And so today is definitely uh, an, another opportunity to um, uh, expose our teachers and our schools uh, with the, this amazing tool. And so with that said, we would love to meet with you guys. A lot of information will be posted there in the uh, in the chat, in the YouTube chat. So please do uh, be engaged. And uh, yeah, giving over there to uh, Kerry Ann. Thank you very much, Temba, for the introduction. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kerry Ann, and I'm very pleased to join you today all the way from Northern Ireland in the UK. So I'm just going to jump into my slideshow here. So I am the International Education Manager at TextHelp. So I have the great pleasure of working with all of our international partners worldwide to bring our tools to students and teachers across the globe. So I have the pleasure of working with wonderful companies like Cloud Education. So for anyone that doesn't know TextHelp, um, we are a UK-based education technology company, and we have been around um, for about 25 years now, which is a very long time in the, the education technology sector. And these are just a few of the stats that kind of show our, our size and our scale. We now have over 45 million users globally of the text help um, suite of software products, and we are onboarding around 25,000 students, um, up to 25,000 students every day. And our tools can be used not only in primary and secondary education, but right up through to further and higher education to support students um, learning experience. We have recently acquired a couple of other companies as well. So that has brought our employee total um, to around 300 now. And about seven out of 10 US districts are using our products. So that means that every school within a district, um, every student in those schools have access to our products. And the mission of Text Help really is that we want to help everybody to understand and to be understood. So that's really at the heart of absolutely everything that we do. And we do that through um, an amazing suite of software tools that support teaching and learning in, in many different areas. So today um, we're going to be looking at number one there and um, the, the purple puzzle piece. We're going to be looking at the read and write extension. So that's really supporting um, it's a literacy support toolbar supporting accessibility, reading improvements, writing improvements, and comprehension across um, all subjects and all curriculum. We also have um, a few other tools that we won't be covering today, but I'm happy to connect with anybody and provide further information if any of those might be of interest. So number two there, we have RIQ, which is our automated um, assessment tool for writing. So it can help teachers to automatically um, mark and grade a piece of student writing to provide um, written feedback and voice feedback as well on that writing and on the student side it will help them to actually um, to, to motivate um, and, and improve their, their own writing. PDF support then with Orbit Note so we will be looking at, at that today a little bit in conjunction with Read and Write so that's bringing all of the accessibility tools of Read and Write into PDFs and also adding some annotation tools in there as well. 
Number four um, in the, the green icon is Fluency Tutor. So Fluency Tutor is our app that helps with improving reading fluency um, and reading confidence. And then last but by no means least is number five. There are digital math tool called Equestio. So some of you might have seen uh, one of my colleagues present um, along with Cloud Education um, a session on Equestio um, a couple of months ago. So that's really helping you to make maths um, easily and digitally on a digital device. And of course, being a, a Google for Education technology partner, all of our tools and softwares integrate really easily with Google Classroom so that they fit right into the workflow that you have going on um, within your school environment. So I just, I want to take, before I kind of go into the software, I just want to take a few minutes um, to talk about inclusion and about our perception of inclusion and how technology can help um, sort of achieve inclusion in the classroom. So let's start with what inclusion is not. Um, it's not where you cater only to, to those sort of students in the middle of the classroom. They are just one particular learner profile or learner type. Um, and it's not where you, you know, don't consider the needs and um, specific needs of other individual um, students that may have difficulty in accessing um, traditional means um, of teaching. We've often maybe thought that there's maybe only um, a small number of different needs to be addressed in the classroom. But really, in reality, the goal should be to, to recognise that each and every learner within the class um, is different. Everybody needs support in their own individual way um, and to be allowed choice and voice in their learning. So if you think, um, think about your student population um, as like an iceberg, so you might have identified um, a small part of that student population with um, individual or specific learning needs like dyslexia. So those are the ones that you can see on the surface, the ones that you're aware of, and you know that they need um, extra help or support or particular um, technology tools to help them access the classroom content. But there will be others um, within the classroom that are maybe hidden. Uh, they have hidden needs, um, hidden support requirements, that, uh, and they might benefit from particular supports that they're currently not getting just because they've never been um, identified um, as having that particular need. And I just want to talk quickly about um, a, a few statistics, really, when you think about it. So um, there was a study carried out by the Queen's University of Belfast. Um, this was a study carried out over a year involving 2,500 pupils. And at the beginning of this study, only one student had actually been identified um, as, as having dyscalculia and having um, additional support requirements within the class. But throughout the course of the study, um, they actually discovered that there were 112 students within this um, two and a half thousand that um, actually um, did, did have some criteria. They actually struggled uh, when it came to maths and, and numbers. Um, they'd never been identified as having um, support before and they never had additional support in place to help them with their studies. So when you think about that, that's actually up to one in 20 of our students that might struggle um, you know, when it comes to math and it comes to numbers, and they're not getting any extra help um, to, to help them overcome that. And if we consider then dyslexia, so on average, around 5% of the student population is identified um, as, as having dyslexia. But in reality, up to 17% of the population can be affected in some way or other by dyslexia. So that's really, um, you know, up to 12% of our student population may not be, um, may be kind of identified or may not be getting the support that they need in order to fulfill their potential, which is ultimately our, our kind of goal as educators to help our students fulfill the potential. But the good news is that technology can help. So what is necessary for some students to, to even just get through the, the basic day-to-day -day schooling um, using particular technology tools can be useful and beneficial for all students. So with the right technology tools, we can actually reach every learner within the classroom. So I'm just going to move on now to talk specifically about um, read and write and how it can help and how it can support students within your classroom and, and outside of your classroom walls as well. So read and write is our literacy support and accessibility software. It works across the whole of the, um, the G Suite environment, including within classroom. 
and it works with any content as well. So whether you're using docs, um, if you're using slides, you're using PDFs, um, it helps um, on many different levels with accessibility, with improving reading levels, writing levels, helps as well with building confidence and oral fluency within the students and building up and improving comprehension overall, which is going to help improve our student outcomes. So I'm going to be uh, jumping into a demo of Read and Write uh, um, in just a few moments, but um, I'm, I just wanted to kind of note that I'll be talking about Read and Write as well um, at the end in conjunction with Orbit Note. So Orbit Note is our, um, our sort of fantastic and newly revamped PDF tool. So it brings not only the, the accessibility features of Read and Write, but also um, some annotation tools within there as well. So it's solving the kind of the, the PDF challenge within the classroom. PDFs are a very, very popular tool um, used by both by teachers and by students. And using Orbit Note gives you the ability to easily assign PDFs um, through very quickly through Google Classroom as well. Enables the student to actually complete um, and annotate and enrich and, and answer any questions on a PDF document and share that back really quickly. Gives you as a teacher the ability to quickly mark that work as well and within the, the classroom environment and um, the Google Classroom environment and provides that complete accessibility and um, study and research tools as well. So what I'm going to do now is just jump straight into a software demo and show you a lot of these um, fantastic features that you can find within Read and Write to help support your students. So if I just escape from my presentation. And I'm just simply going to jump into a Google document here. So like I said, Read and Write will work on any, um, any content type that you're using, and it's applicable within any classroom subject as well. So whether you're teaching English, geography, science, whatever it might be, the Read and Write toolbar can help your students to actually access and comprehend that content that, that you're teaching them. So here I just I have a demo resource, okay, and I have opened up my Read and Write toolbar. So this um, is my Read and Write extension. It's like a, a purple jigsaw puzzle piece. So just simply clicking on that opens up um, this this suite um, of additional tools here that you can see across the top of my document. And one of the first features that I want to show um, is very very simple, but yet a very powerful feature, and that is our text to speech. So by highlighting some text or simply clicking in and pressing the play button, I can have any text on the screen read aloud to me. The Earth's crust and the top of the mantle have about 20 text on. Okay, I'm just gonna pause that there um, and show that as, as that's reading aloud, it's also, um, we have dual color highlighting happening there as well. So it's highlighting the sentence that's being read aloud and also the word in another, co uh, another color. So that's helping the student with their tracking and processing. They can follow along. It's helping with their, their word site recognition. Okay, and I'm just going to pop quickly into the settings here as well and show you that you can actually adjust that voice as well. If I go into my options and my speech settings, okay, and if I just start to type English here, you'll see um, a variety of different accents. We have here, I have a South African accent and I can adjust the speed of that as well. So if it's reading a little bit too fast, I can slow it down. I can speed it up um, if I if I want it to, to go a little bit faster. And also within our translation tools, we have um, lots of different languages there that we can choose to translate words into. So I'm just going to set that to Afrikaans at the moment. I'm going to pop back in there and I'm going to press the play button again. The Earth's crust and the top of the mantle have about 20 tectonic plates. Okay, so you see that's changed that accent and within the options as well there are multiple different um, voices and different languages available so you know if you are teaching a modern foreign language class as well you can go in you can select a different voice and you can have text read aloud in that voice so showing um, a few of the other features say that i am reading this text and i come across a word that that i'm maybe not familiar with and i don't quite understand i can select that word and I can very quickly pop open a dictionary definition of that word, which can also be read aloud. Noun. Hanging cloth used as a blind is... Okay. I also have a picture dictionary. So again, I can open that up and I can get like a, a visual reference for that word as well. 
and then I'm just going to pop open my translator tool. Okay, and I can just go through maybe select another word uh, that I'm not familiar with, and that's going to change my dictionary definition, my picture, um, and my translation as well. So if you have a, a student in the class um, being taught in English, and that's maybe not their home language, they can use that dictionary tool just for a very quick reference, um, you know, to help them build up their comprehension of a particular word. You also have the ability to, to drag and drop these picture um, images into the actual text as well, so that you've got, um, you know, the, the visual image there to help build up your understanding. I'm just going to close all those down just for now. And I want to show very quickly um, our screenshot reader. So within this text, um, this is an image that I have here with some text um, sort of embedded in there. And I can't actually click on that word to have it read aloud. What I can use then is my screenshot reader. So this is making any inaccessible text accessible to me. So I can just draw around that word. Crust. And I will be able to have that read aloud then. Okay. I'm just going back again. I'm just going to reload my page. Another fantastic feature within the Read and Write toolbar, and something that that I find myself very, very useful, is the ability. Um, just moving along the toolbar here, I'm going to select the audio maker. So this gives me the ability to turn a piece of text into an audio document. So you can simply go and highlight any text that you have on the screen. And by selecting the audio maker button, what it is going to do is take that text and convert it into an MP3 file. Okay, and then you can rename that file. You can share that with your students. And just very quickly, within a few seconds, you have taken a plain um, sort of text um, resource and you have created an alternative content type, an alternative resource type uh, by way of MP3 there. So that's really useful for students maybe that can uh, comprehend better or take in information better or study better by listening rather than have to sort of read and, and try to decode and understand the text on the screen. So it's giving them the ability to, to sort of listen um, to the content they can pop it on their on their mobile phone, on their, their iPod or whatever they have access to and, and listen to that as well. Really great for, um, for study and revision on the go as well. So while you're traveling to school, you can be listening to, to those notes um, you know, that you've had to revise for, for any upcoming test or exam. Okay, I'm just gonna show um, the sort of next um, along here on the toolbar is our screen mask. Okay, this is a really great, um, great tool for any students that maybe suffer from any kind of visual stress disorders or perhaps even attention disorders so it would kind of be like the equivalent to a colored overlay on a page so you can actually put it on your screen so if i just select my screen mask it's going to bring up um, this color overlay on my screen i can go into the settings and i can change the background color i can change the opacity of background color as well. So again, if you have a student that has a particular color sensitivity, you can actually adjust this um, to, to their specific needs. I can adjust the, the opacity of the reading light, the height of the reading light as well. So again, anybody that even just has, um, you know, like um, maybe attention disorders, you can actually black out the rest of the screen and just have this reading panel. So that again, they're just really focusing on a particular part of the text. Um, at, at the time and that will stay on just until you go back up and click um, click the uh, screen mask button to switch that off again. So that's a, a few supports really for um, for reading, for comprehension um, and for the sort of accessibility within um, the classroom content. What I want to show now are a few of our sort of writing support tools. So moving on from, from reading support, how can we actually help our students um, to improve their writing skills or give them tools that they need to, to sort of produce the work that they're, they're capable of doing. So one of the first tools that I want to show is the talk and type button. So again, we have um, a question here. Maybe if you have a student that, um, that struggles to actually write, maybe they don't spell very well, but they can actually express themselves um, quite well when they're speaking. 
So giving them token access to talk and type means that they can just dictate their answer to any questions and have that typed up on the screen. So I'm just going to answer this question now. Okay. And you'll see that, that it's typing up whatever I'm writing. The tectonic plates make up the top layer of the earth. And there are about 20 of them. Okay, so I'm quite far away from my microphone. So I picked up a little bit of that. And I'm just going to try that one more time. Tectonic plates make up the top layer of the earth. And again, you have the ability within talk and type to switch the language as well. So um, again, you know, in modern foreign language classes, or if you allow your student to, to use their home language, they can actually dictate, select that language and dictate and have that typed up um, within their, uh, the language that they're sort of more confident and more comfortable in. Another of the tools that we have for writing support is our word prediction. So if I just switch the word prediction on, just for a second. And as I, uh, when I switch the word prediction on, as I start to type, it's going to suggest words for me. So if I start to type, so it's just taking it one second to load. Give me, let me just refresh that. Technology never quite wants to play ball um, when you're sort of showing something live to people. So I'm just going to switch my word prediction back on. There we go. And it's loaded up um, my, my suggestion box here. So as I start to type, you'll see that it's suggesting words that I might want to type. Plate. I can hover over that and have it read aloud so I know that I'm selecting the right word. VI. Bound. Boundary. Between. And if I make, say I make a spelling mistake there, so I'm trying to say, say edge uh, and I haven't quite um, typed it right, you'll see that it's uh, it's picking up phonetic spelling errors there and it's suggesting edge. that might be the word edge. that I want to use. Edge. I can hover over and I can hear, yep, that's the one that Off. I wanted. Again, I can just keep typing, okay? Tectonic. With uh, word prediction as well, when you have that switched on, um, it's it'll keep predicting words. So it's sort of encouraging the students to keep writing and to keep making longer sentences, to write a little bit more, to write a little bit better. And it's always only ever going to suggest um, you know, correct spelling um, and correct grammar words as well. So it's helping them to build up um, you know, correct um, spelling, punctuation and grammar. We also have Check It, which is our spelling, grammar, and punctuation checker. So you do have the ability there if you've typed something up to kind of go through then um, and run that, that spell checker. And it will tell you if um, underline if you've made a particular mistake and suggest the, the correct version as well. So again, just really helping the student uh, to build up that literacy and, and that correct um, spelling, grammar, and punctuation when they are writing. So I mentioned that Read and Write works not only um, you know, in Google Docs here, like I have been doing, but it works on any content type. So I'm just going to pop um, into a web page that I have open right now and show the toolbar working within there as well. And if I just open up again my, my Read and Write toolbar, you'll see that I have access to all of these different tools. So again, I can have any content on a web page read aloud. You'll see as well here, so in this web page, there's a lot There's a lot going on. There's text that I want to read. There are maybe some adverts. There are links to, to lots of, um, of different articles. A lot of distractions going on here. So one of the tools that I really love within um, Read and Write on a web page is the Simplify button. So if I just click that, what it's going to do, it's going to take the text from that web page pop it into a separate window for me, okay? And it's taken away all of those distractions, all of the pictures, all of the adverts, all of the external links. And it's just left me with, um, with the text that, that I want to read. Within here, I can change the background um, color. I can change the font, okay? So there's lots of different font styles here. I can change the size of that um, according to my needs. I can change the line spacing. 
And again, I have access to all these tools to read aloud and to highlight any words that come up in the dictionary. I also have this great little button here, um, which is the, the Discover button. It's currently working in beta. And what that will do is it will highlight any words that maybe I want to, to look a little bit further into and it will give me, when I click on them, um, a wiki reference and I can actually look up um, and look a little bit more into these as well with some images and some further information. Okay, popping just back into my, um, my web page. So maybe I have some research work to do for a particular topic that I'm studying in school and I can go on, I can look up uh, the information. And what I can do is use these highlighters within the Read and Write toolbar. Again, these are an amazing tool for, for study and for research, uh, for organizing and, and pulling together work. So I'm just gonna go through and highlight highlight some key information here. And again, I can choose um, any color I want here. I can keep it all the same color, or maybe I want to um, group um, facts in yellow. I want to group um, quotes and something that people have said in green or, or whatever way I want to sort of organize my work. I can go through and I can do that. Once I've highlighted all of the information that I want, I just go across to this little collect highlights icon. I can choose to highlight um, or sort them by color or sort them by position in the document. And once I click OK, what that is going to do, it's going to take all that information that I've just highlighted and it's going to pop it into a separate Google document for me. OK, so you can see everything that I highlighted there has all been pulled across. It's also given me the reference back to where I got that from. So that's really helping to build up you know, your, your study and revision skills, your referencing skills as well. Um, if I've gone through and, and I maybe have to write a report and I have to find um, you know, certain facts and figures, I can highlight that and bring it all together into one page that I can then use to sort of pull information in when I'm writing my report. One of the other great uses of, um, highlight all of this and, and clear away the highlights. One of the other great uses of these toolbars is to make a vocabulary list. So what I'm gonna do is gonna select um, a couple of words here and I'm going to highlight them um, see I'll select ocean uh, give me one more word uh, surface okay so I've highlighted sort of some some keywords or maybe words that I'm not familiar with and I'm just going to go across here to the vocabulary list button and once I click that again what the software is going to do it's going to collect um, those words that I have just highlighted and it's going to pull them into a separate document into a vocabulary list for me. So it's given me the word, the dictionary definition, the picture dictionary image and then I have got a separate column here that I can um, use to sort of put my, my own notes in. Um, I can you know write a sentence using my own words. I can do whatever I want with that because that is just a you know it, it's a it's an editable Google document now. This is great for, for teachers uh, to save a lot of time and kind of pulling out keyword lists for particular topics. You can just create that vocabulary list um, in a matter of seconds or for students um, to sort of independently do that themselves. They can go through and highlight unfamiliar words or words that they've just learned that day and build up their own vocabulary list. And just one final feature that, that I want to show within um, within the, the, the Read and Write toolbar here is the Practice Reading Aloud button. So I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we have a, a web app called Fluency Tutor, which allows you to um, assign reading passages. Students can, have, can read those aloud, can record themselves reading it and share it back to you um, to, be, um, to be assessed and, and graded on. Within the Read and Write toolbar, we have this little Practice Reading Aloud button, which is a bit of a, partial a mini version um, I guess of fluency tutor that can help the students to sort of build up their reading fluency. So if I select that it will pull out um, the, the text okay that, that I was just um, using there. I have access to all these tools here so I can listen to it being read aloud. I can look up words I'm not familiar with. I can translate words if I need to. I can use the screen mask. 
And when I'm ready, I can actually start to record and I can practice reading that. So I can press the record button, I can read out the text on the screen. And once I'm finished, I can, uh, using this little arrow, it's grayed out at the moment because I haven't actually recorded anything, but I can actually send that to my teacher and have them listen to it. So you can actually hear, um, you know, how, how their reading is coming along, if their fluency is improving, um, if their hesitations are getting less, if their mispronunciations are, are reducing as well. So that's another great little feature to help build up um, reading fluency and confidence in reading. Okay, so um, we've had a look at the, the reading supports, writing supports, um, and some sort of study and, and revision supports within Read and Write. And I just want to show um, these working now um, in a PDF document. So I mentioned um, at the beginning the um, our Orbit Note, which is our PDF tool. Okay. Um, so within um, within Orbit Note, I can actually just I can use that as my sort of default PDF tool as well. Um, if I have set that up um, within my computer. And any PDF that I find online, um, anything that I'm using, anything that's been sent to me in PDF form, I can just open that using the Orbit Note extension. Once I do that, I get access to all of these different tools. Okay, so again, I can switch on my click to speak. I can click within the text. For each sentence. And it will read aloud to me. Okay. I have also access to dictionaries and picture dictionaries that we've seen um, elsewhere with Read and Write. I've also got the screenshot reader. I've got the translator tool. I've got the vocabulary list. So again, I can go through, I can highlight um, using the highlighters, any keywords and pull out my vocabulary tool. And I have access as well to my screen mask should I need it. What we also have within Read and Write are these additional um, annotation tools. Okay, so it's given me again all of the, the accessibility features that we know and that we love with Read and Write, and it's given me these additional annotation features. So what I can actually do then is um, use those to, to complete a worksheet, or I can use those. Um, maybe I find a resource and I want to enrich it. I want to um, highlight key information, I want to draw around important information, and I want to share that with my students. I have the ability to do all of that with Orbit Note. So just to show it in action, okay, we have just a very simple worksheet here. So it's saying for each sentence, draw a box around the subject of the sentence. So I can just go up here, I can select the shape, I can select to have a circle, um, a square, whatever I need, I can change the, the color I can change the thickness, okay? And once I've selected what I want, I can just simply go and, and do what it is asked me to do. Okay, we we'll just select that again. And I can draw that box around there. I also have a freehand drawing tool here. Again, I can change this um, whatever color that, uh, whatever color I want, whatever thickness I want. And I can use that then just to, to complete the rest. So under underline or highlight the verb of the sentence. So I can do that using my pen tool as well. So it's just giving me the ability to annotate on top here um, and do whatever um, I want. I also have an eraser here. So again, I can go through and I can, I can undo um, anything that I need to do there. These last two annotation tools that we have within, uh, within the Orbit Note toolbar, again, fantastic tools. We have a, a text writer tool and we have a push pin. So the push pin you would use if you want to sort of add additional notes into the PDF, but sort of have them hidden um, away from, from plain sight, I guess. So I'm just gonna select the push pin. I am going to pop it um, in here. So I can use this little box then to write um, a note, um, some, some inf additional information or maybe some instructions. And here I have access again to um, text to speech. If I've written something in there, I can have it read aloud. I have access to my word prediction and I have access to my talk and type. So rather than having to type out the annotation, I can dictate it as well. Read the following sentences and answer the questions. Okay. 
So I've been able to, to type that. And then once I click away, you can see this little red push pin here. So that's indicating that there's some additional information here. So I can add instructions, I can add um, links or whatever I want into a PDF and share those with my student. When my student receives that, they can click on the push pin and they can see the message um, or the additional information that I have left there. Okay. So that's the, the push pin. With the typewriter or text writer tool, again, similar idea, you can use that to, to actually write on top of the text. So if I just select that, and I want to put it in here, and I'll write the correct version of the sentence. Okay. And with that, again, I can change the, the color um, that I want to have that in. When I have selected that, what it will do is it will stay on the screen. So while the push pin sort of hides behind there, the text writer tool will go um, on the screen and stay on the screen. So it's given me the ability and the access as well to word prediction and, and text to speech to be able to, to put that um, into the text anywhere that I want it to go and be able to complete worksheets um, and everything. What we also have here within the Orbit um, note is the ability to share that with Google Classroom with one click. So again, I just go up here I click the classroom button and I can choose which class I want to share that with. So maybe I have created a resource. I have found a fantastic PDF resource um, on the website and I can simply use that little button within Orbit Note um, to, to just share that directly with the class. I can choose what I want to do with that. So, um, you know, it's creating a, a resource or material or I can create an assignment and I can send out a worksheet through that as well. And that will just take me through my whole, um, very quickly through my, my classroom flow just to set up that assignment. When a student receives that as well, they will also have access to this little button to turn it back into the teacher. So if you have set an assignment, they have completed it using these, um, these tools, then they can just click that button and have it shared back to you in classroom. When you receive it, then you can go through and really quickly just go through and, and mark that. Um, you can also Something that I actually forgot to mention um, within Read and Write is the ability to, to leave voice notes as well. So I'll just show that very quickly now if I go back in here. We have this little icon within Read and Write, which is our voice notes. So if a student has returned some work to you, you can actually um, leave them a voice note um, by way of uh, feedback, by way of a voice note as well. So if I uh, select that, I can hit the little microphone button and I can record um, up to a minute's worth at the minute of feedback or information for that student. Press insert and it will insert just like a Google comment on the screen there. So it's a much more personalized way of, of leaving feedback. And you know, they can hear um, the tone of your voice rather than just reading um, a text or seeing some, some red pen uh, really across their work. So that really um, is a sort of very, very quick tour um, of Read and Write and, and what you can use it for, uh, along with Orbit Note and what you can do with it. I am just going to very quickly pop back into the uh, presentation screen at the moment, just for a couple of minutes, just to, to finish up here. So we've seen how we can support accessibility and we can support reading, uh, comprehension and writing improvements as well. We can support study and we can support revision with all of these different tools um, in the Read and Write toolbar brought into to one place. And we've also seen how in conjunction with Orbit Note, we can um, annotate, we can enrich, um, we can complete PDFs um, and share those really quickly and really easily. If you um, within your school would like to try Read and Write for yourselves, we are very happy to offer um, a Free, uh, free of charge and uh, absolutely no obligation whatsoever. Uh, 90 day pilot um, license of the software for your school domain. So if you are interested in that, you just simply need to email the word pilot, either in the, um, the subject of the email or in the body of the email. That's all you need to do is write pilot and send it to international at texthelp.com. Then I will get in touch with you and just check a couple of details like your school domain and get you set up to try read and write and um, put it into the hands of your students and see what a difference um, it can make for them in their day-to-day -day learning and study. 
With Read and Write as well, you would get access not only on school devices, but home use as well. So if the student has access to devices at home, they have those additional supports whenever you're not there in front of them as a teacher as well. So it's giving them access to additional supports to help learning um, at home. I also just really quickly want to mention that we, um, on the 20th of October, so just um, in, in a few weeks time, we are hosting a Festival of Inclusive Education. So 20th of October, Festival of Inclusive Education, we have an amazing lineup of speakers, um, industry experts from primary, secondary and higher education, talking all things um, universal design for learning, um, STEM support, um, best practice for inclusive education. We would absolutely love you to join us for that. It's, um, it's an all day event, no charge whatsoever, and there will be lots and lots of great um, CPD happening that day. So for more information, you can go to text.help forward slash text help dash fest, or you can search for the hashtag inclusive edufest, or just look up text help festival of inclusive education. You'll find lots of information online on how to um, sign up for that. Or you can email me afterwards and I can send you a direct link to, to sign up um, and join us on that date. Um, that's really um, sort of a very quick tour of Read and Write. Um, so any questions at all following today, just reach out. I'm very happy to help. My email is on there. My Twitter um, is on there as well. So really appreciate a follow um, and a connection on there as well. Very happy to connect anytime. And without further ado, um, Temba, I'll reach back to hand it back over to you. I just uh, check in the chat and I see that there are actually no questions, uh, but I um, I think you've answered actually all uh, the questions that people might have. Uh, but uh, from our side, thank you very much. It was really an amazing, amazing um, session. And I think our teachers absolutely um, have found the session very informative. And so please, ladies and gentlemen, you're more than welcome to just reach out to us. Uh, we've inserted quite a lot of information uh, in the chat, uh, in the YouTube chat there uh, uh, for you. And once again, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and we would we would also be there to support you. Once again, from our staff, from Cloudy to you, uh, a, a Google for Education partner company, uh, offering from basics training to a little bit more beyond the basics training and as well as professional development uh, for our schools. You're more than welcome to reach out to us. Hey, with that said, thank you very much. And uh, as we always like to say, flight, flight in on story as eight. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody.